وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا فَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Welcome to Quran in Depth أنا أسك الله سبحانه وتعالى to bless such minutes in which we ponder over the verses of the Qur'an, reciting the Book of Allah, who still in Surah Al-Baqarah, we reached verse number 30. But before we continue with the Book of Allah and the miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is such a sad thing for us to witness what is happening to people that are trying to help with the humanitarian aids to the people of Gaza. And, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make us see the truth and for the Muslims to realize the affairs of their brothers and sisters and for us to see the truth and to hold fast to the truth and to uh, make us steadfast on the deen of Islam. Inshallah, after this episode uh, in I Magazine, there will be a coverage to what happened, so please uh, stay tuned. And again, these uh, mixed feelings and these things that we see and we witness, it's something that has to make us return back to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet wasalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise. And we have to witness this very well, that it is our responsibilities as Muslims to return back to the book of Allah and to the sunnah of the Prophet wasalam. This is the source of our honor and dignity. And there's no honor and dignity to the Muslims on the face of earth unless they hold fast to the book of Allah and unto the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Last time uh, it was verse number 29 where it mentioned about the creation of the earth and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything for the human beings, for them to fulfill the purpose of our life and that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned to the heavens and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it to seven heavens and he subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge encompasses everything. And the lessons to be learned from such verses and all the verses of the Qur'an, it should lead us to humble ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, total submission to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And then with verse number 30 in Surah Al-Baqarah and the verses to come after that, it talks about the first story in the Qur'an, the inception of mankind, the creation of mankind and the father of all the human beings, Adam alayhi salam, peace be upon him, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him, and the benefits within the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we need to ponder over and see what is our job as human beings that came generations after generations, way after the creation of Adam alayhi salam, how can we fulfill and reflect over the story, how we were created and how we're supposed to live our life and how to witness the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything around us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an many stories, things that happened in the past before the Prophet wasalam. And the purpose of these stories are many, many benefits as a result of pondering over it. But one of which is for the believers for the people to see the sunnah, the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth, that never ends, the struggle between the truthfulness and falsehood, something that stays till the day of judgment. It started since Adam alayhi salam, and it would not end. So knowing this, then it would make the reaction of the believers according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them. Stories that are mentioned for people to see, the believers and the disbelievers and how the struggle between them, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aided the messengers of Allah, and this aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the messengers of Allah, and also to the followers of the messengers of Allah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
يا ايها النبي حسبك الله ومن اتبعك من المؤمنين او بروفيت اوف الله الله سبحانه وتعالى از سفيشنت فور يو اند الله سبحانه وتعالى از سفيشنت فور ذوس هو فولوود يو امونج ذا بيليفرز ان لا ننصر رسلنا والذين امنوا في الحياه الدنيا ويوم يقوم الاشهاد which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give victory to the, to the messengers of Allah and to the believers in this life and in the hereafter. And the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth. But we have to fulfill our jobs of being believers in the sense and in the meaning that is mentioned in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu Not according to our own understanding or our own desires or what fits our environments or what people would accept from us. It's according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Most High, wants from us. And this is why we need to return and to reflect over the book of Allah, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and then to submit to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we look into the Qur'an from the beginning to the end, as the ulama they say, you would find six different topics that the Qur'an basically uh, uh, revolves around. One of which is the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for people to worship Him alone. And that comes with it, the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the creation of Allah, the clear evidences that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship and the names and attributes of Allah. For people to get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the tawheed, the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another subject, and that is the, uh, the rewards for those who would fulfill the purpose of their life. And the rulings that are mentioned with regarding to the believers and their characteristics and how they're supposed to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the different rulings. And the third type of uh, subjects that are in the Qur'an, what would happen to those who were steadfast on the deen of Allah, those who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and obeyed Him, their affairs in this life and this is where the stories of the Qur'an and what happens to them in the hereafter. And the opposite of that are the three other topics that relates to the disbelievers. Those who would associate partners with Allah. And what are their characteristics? And what is their affairs in this life with the stories and the struggle between the truthful ones and the falsehood? And what happens to them in the hereafter? And this is where the hellfire and the characteristics of the hellfire and so on and so forth. So it's important for the believers to get to see this. And then to see the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to get the benefit. So let's uh, recite verse number 30 and try to reflect the meanings that are mentioned in this miraculous verse from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Most High, says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا ويسفك الدماء ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون This is the first of set of verses that talks about the creation of Adam عليه السلام وإذ قال ربك وإذ and this is something that we would see repeated in many verses in the Quran as the ulama they say it means and remember something that refers to a time that happened in the past and this is again Something before the creation of Adam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَإِذْ قَالَ said, رَبُّكَ رَبُّكَ Rabb means the creator, the sustainer, the one that gives life and death, the Lord of the heavens and the earth. And رَبُّكَ Your Lord. And this by itself gives the feeling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we know of course, and this is the belief that He is our Rabb, he is our creator. He is our sustainer. And that will bring in the heart of the believers the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he is the owner of all things. That he is the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that ordered the angels since everything is by the control and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَ When your Lord, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said to the angels, لِلْمَلَائِكَ Al-Malaika means the angels, إِنِّي جَاعِلُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ خليفة. That he said to them, I will make on the face of earth Khalifa. And we'll talk about the word Khalifa and what it means. قالوا أت... And this is again reversed to Adam and the generations to come after him. قالوا أتجعل فيها ما يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء. They said, the angels, they replied by saying, Would you make or create on the face of earth 
someone that would spread corruption يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء and shed blood ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك and we glorify you these are the angels saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we glorify you with praises and sanctify you O Allah قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most high he said إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون indeed verily I know what you do not know this verse again it's the one it's the first one instead of the verses that talks about the creation of the human beings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the angels the angels are creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them from light and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them in such a way that they are constantly in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praising him constantly at all times they never get tired of such a worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have been not given the choice like the human beings and the jinn in which this was presented to them meaning to the human beings to take this responsibility to, and to be entrusted with the amana with the trust that they would listen and obey and they have the ability to listen and obey or not to be obedient or disobedient to be believers or disbelievers and as a result in the after their punishment all the rewards will be given to them but for the angels this is not the case that they are in constant worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, when we talk about the angels to make it easier for us to uh, get the proper belief because these matters are unseen to us and as we heard in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah that one of the basic characteristics of the believers that they believe in the unseen and the unseen the only way that we get to know the unseen is through the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the protected revelation from Allah the Quran and the authentic sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam so the angels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them and they are huge and powerful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them from light the human beings are created from clay the jinn are created from fire but when it comes to the angels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them from light they have certain jobs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entrusted them with many different jobs and one of the jobs as angel Gibril, Jibreel alayhi salam that his job is to send the message and the books to the messengers of Allah. He's the one responsible for the wahi, the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the different angels that are mentioned in the Quran and in the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. They can be formed in different shapes, as in the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, where he came to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam in the form of a man, and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they saw that. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam said to them, that this is Jibreel came to teach you your religion. We believe in them in general terms, like it's mentioned in, in this verse, and in specific terms, the names that are mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And we need to believe only in when it comes to the names, in the names of those who are mentioned in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and in the angels in general. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned their names in many verses in the Quran and in the sunnah of the Prophet So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the angels, those who are in constant worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. That when you hear the word inni, that means indeed, verily, no doubt. Something to make it very uh, stressed and very clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high, the one that is capable of all things, إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةٌ That he subhanahu wa ta'ala will make on the face of earth, will create on the face of earth, Khalifa. Khalifa, uh, the word Khalifa means successor, means that generation will come after generation, that it's not just one human being, but one generation that comes after generation. And it can mean also someone that is a successor, appointed by the Most High subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill the orders of Allah, and to call others to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to rule among the people by the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it can mean one of three things. One of which that Adam alayhi salam, this refers to Adam alayhi salam as being sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the first of the creation of the human beings and sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to call his offsprings to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, to rule them 
by the orders and by the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It also means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam and then come after Adam, his uh, offsprings and generations after generation. And the third meaning that Khalifa refers to the human beings in general, that they would succeed one another. One generation comes after another. And this by itself, you see the miracle of it. If a person look into the face of earth from uh, above or from a high place, you won't see a generation being wiped out and then another generation get replaced from nowhere. It's something that when you look at the people, if it's correct to say that, you won't feel that. Some people are dying and some people are uh, born and people are not seeing this. And this is the miraculous nature of the creation of the human beings as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them. So uh, inshallah ta'ala after the break we'll continue with the verse. So stay inshallah ta'ala with us. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا It comes to you the truth and the attribute of the one who created you that he's one and alone running this universe that he doesn't become born, he doesn't die, he doesn't eat and go to the bathroom. This is not God. You know, the problem here is, yeah. is this, it doesn't make sense. Who was Jesus worshipping? Yeah, because it's recorded in the Gospels. Despite all of the other issues about the Gospels, we put those aside. We just say it's mentioned there that Jesus worshipped God. One who protects us from hunger. Many people trying to get together, but all their efforts were in vain because of ignoring or turning away from this great foundation. We see many people coming to the way of truth, following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but later on, they get off track. What is the reason behind that? Unity is a result, it's not a cover-up. We have to be united from inside. And Allah made this clear in the Quran when He said, وَأَطِيعُ اللَّهَ Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. Before we continue, again, as a reminder that after this episode, inshallah ta'ala, there will be the I magazine program. Uh, so please uh, turn to it with the coverage of what's happening to the humanitarian ship. Uh, and again, you can call us, inshallah ta'ala, you see the phone number on the screen. Verse number 13, Surah Al-Baqarah. And we stopped where the word Khalifa, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the angels that he would create on the face of earth, a Khalifa, Khalifa, Caliph, as sometimes they say it like that way, and a successor. Either it refers to Adam alayhi salam or to the human beings in large. Uh, if it refers to Adam alayhi salam, it has the meaning of someone that was appointed and trusted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to call his offsprings and the generation to come to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and to rule them according to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It can also mean that Adam السلام, is in such a nature that he would give birth uh, with his wife to other generations and generation come after generation. And the third meaning that refers to the human beings that their nature is that they are a generation after another. One generation succeed another. And the three meanings are mentioned basically in the Quran in many different verses. So from this word we get to understand that human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored them. That the human beings are not according to what people say of the theory of evolution and this nonsense that the human beings is created from some form of evolution and from you know things as we all heard before. 
This is not the case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high, honored the human beings. And the human beings, their origin as it's mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam from nothing. And he is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And he created them from clay as it will come inshallah ta'ala. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored the human being, that he made the human being in such a way that he is entrusted to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, gave him the intellect and the abilities to look around and to see the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to choose whether to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we know the rewards of such people or whether to live the life of ignorance and spreading corruption on the face of earth and we also know the outcome and the result of such a behavior. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most wise and nobody is to question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of the heavens and the earth because he is the most wise, the most just, the most powerful subhanahu wa ta'ala he said to the angels that he would create Adam alayhi salam and the generations to come after Adam alayhi salam. The angels, they said, and as the ulama, they say as if the angels, they got to know the nature of the human beings and that there will be spread of corruption and bloodshed. But before we continue, we have a phone call. Assalamu mm-hmm. alaikum. Hello? Sister Momin? Yes, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi From UAE now. Yes. Go ahead, Sam. Yes. Uh, I really enjoy watching your program, Sheikh. Jazakum khair. Jazakum khair. Go ahead, Thank Sam. you very much. Allah uh, Jazakallah khair. Allah I Allah. want to know about Tamam, uh, once you complete the Quran, what mm-hmm. is the correct way of doing the tamam? The correct way of how to complete the Qur'an? Yes. Sure, inshaAllah. Jazakum khair. Thank you very much. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the angels, as if they get to know the nature of the human beings, that the human beings won't be like the angels, won't be in constant worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are given the choice. So the angels, they said, أَتَجْعَلُ fiha." Would you make on the face of earth someone that would spread corruption and they shed blood? And as the ulama, they say, either the angels, they were informed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is how the nature of the human race will be. Or they said that based on what was created before the human beings, the jinn, and they were present on the face of earth. And this is something that was widespread by the jinn. So they said that, that would you have or place on the face of earth man yufsidu fiha. And this is definitely something that is condemned. Those who would spread corruption on the face of earth and shed blood. And which we know from this part of the verse that this is something that it is not permissible of course. That this is something that the human beings would fall into such corruption and sins. And for the believers they would choose otherwise. For the believers, they would choose to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that the only thing that would make the human beings in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to be, that is to follow the ways and the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ And this is, and they would say, and they, they said, and we are glorifying you with praises. نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ نُسَبِّح comes from the tasbih. And tasbih, when a person says, Subhanallah. What does that mean? It means that a person is glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it means that a person is saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from all deficiencies. And this is something that is very important when we're making dhikr. That we need to understand what we're saying. We need to understand what we're saying in the salah. We need to understand what we say after the salah in matters of dhikr, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of which when a person makes tasbih, and a person says Subhanallah, as if he is saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from all deficiencies. Nusabbihu bihamdik. Glorify you with praises. Bihamdik meaning when a person would say alhamdulillah. And alhamdulillah means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one to be praised. The perfect praise. Because he has the perfect names and attributes. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why subhanallah and alhamdulillah they usually come together. We say subhanallah wa bihamdih. We say subhanallah al azimi wa bihamdi. We know that in the morning and in the evenings, it is from the authentic hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam 
that he would say subhanallah wa bihamdihi hundred times in the morning and hundred times in the evening. And he said alayhi salatu wasalam in the meaning of which that whoever says subhanallah wa bihamdihi in the morning and in the evening hundred times each, all the previous sins will be forgiven even if it's equal to the foam of the sea. Such a great reward for such simple words to be said. Why is that? Because as we heard in this verse and how it is so much give the, the praise and the perfect praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when these two words are combined together. Why? Because the first one, you're saying that there's no deficiencies to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you add to this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most perfect. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best example. But when a person, for example, praising a king, and he would say or she would say that you are not an unjust person. You are not greedy. You are not such and such and so on. Just denying and negating all the different deficiencies that the king would have. This is definitely has a praise to it. But imagine that you add to this that the person would say after that, and you are so generous, and you are so just and so on. Then that gives the perfect praise. And to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best example, this is the best way for a person to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we get to learn that from the Qur'an and in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So we imitate the angels when we say subhanallah wa bihamdi. And also the Prophet ﷺ when he said, and this is an authentic hadith reported by Imam Abi Dawood in his sunnah, that whoever says subhanallah al wa bihamdi, this is a palm tree in Jannah for such a person. Such a simple words that comes from the mouth of the human being, that the reward of it is a palm tree in Jannah. And a tree in Jannah, a small area on the face of Jannah is better than the whole world and whatever it contains, as the Prophet ﷺ said, by saying, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. So the angels, they said, while we are praising you, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the praise, with the perfect praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَنُقَدِّسُ لك And sanctify you, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from all deficiencies, He's the most pure subhanahu wa ta'ala in his names and attributes and in the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is another benefit to take from this. If we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most high, the one that has the perfect names and attributes, then definitely the most perfect rules and orders is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how can then a person turn away from the orders of Allah? Thinking, that by disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some goodness would occur to the person. This is definitely misconception. This is bad expectations of the creator of the heavens and the earth. A deficiency when a person doesn't get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when people would claim deficiencies to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when the angels, they would say such beautiful words, that they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they glorify Him. They praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from all deficiencies. And one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Quddus. The one that is the most pure, the one that is free from all deficiencies. وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكْ قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the angels that I know what you do not know. And this is definitely a belief that has to be present in our hearts and the angels. They know that of course. But it shows that how the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything, that even the angels, the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them from light, that they never commit a sin. And we know that sins makes the person have some misunderstanding of many things. But the angels, they are sinless. And still, they do not know everything. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ that I, I know what you do not know. What does that mean in our life and our actions? That we need to submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because He subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and we do not know. The knowledge that we have is so limited and it's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought you out of the womb of your mothers, not knowing anything. And who would ever claim that when he was born or when she was born, they were already scholars and they had so much knowledge. Right? A person newly born doesn't know anything. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that gave, gave us the senses and the ears and the sights and so on so that we would gain the knowledge year after year and how the miraculous nature of the human being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala installed into the human beings of the learning process, that it's something that is amazing if the human beings will ponder over this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that has the most perfect knowledge that we need to understand that we do not know. The angels themselves, they didn't know anything. And one of which, the wisdom behind the creation of the human beings. Some of the people even do not know the wisdom behind the creation of the human beings. Of course, we know that the wisdom behind that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And there are many wisdom and many things that we do not know and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And it's enough for us to know that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His knowledge encompasses everything. And we do not know anything but what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us. But one of the things, and this is just an example to see, something that is away from the mind of others, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He mentioned some of the attributes that He possessed subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of which that He is the most forgiver. He forgives. And this is definitely a quality that is a perfect attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how would it be there if there is no sins whatsoever? If there is no human beings to fall into mistakes and to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where this attribute will be in place if there is no presence of the human beings and for them to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept their repentance. Yes, as the belief of the people of the truth, that these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it does not need a practicality to it for us to believe in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has these attributes even before these attributes are in practice. But again, this is something to show the wisdom behind the creation of the human beings. Also, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. How can justice be served in the perfect sense if there is no the creation of the human beings and the hereafter and so on and so forth. So there are many wisdom behind the creation of the human being. But it's enough for the believers to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and we do not know. Another verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu that he ordained fighting unto the believers. This is, becomes part of the religion. Part of the religion is to fight for the cause of Allah, not for their own personal benefits, but to make the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala superior, to spread the justice of Al-Islam, to spread the mercy of the message of the Prophet wasalam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he revealed this verse, it's definitely fighting and so on. It's something that is against the nature of the human being. But he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْقِتَالُ وَهُوَ كُرْهٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَى أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَى أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained fighting unto you. And maybe that you would dislike something and it's good for you. Maybe that you would like something and it's evil for you. Then who would know? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu ya'lam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and you do not know. And this meaning, if it's present in the hearts of the believers, then their affairs is to do nothing but to submit themselves to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most high. And that the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything. So having this benefit and continuing inshallah ta'ala and answering the questions from last week and the question of today inshallah ta'ala after the break. أفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا It comes to you the truth and the attribute of the one who created you that he's one and alone running this universe that he doesn't become born, he doesn't die, he doesn't eat and go to the bathroom. This is not God. The problem here is, yeah. is this, it doesn't make sense. Who was Jesus worshipping? Uh, because it's recorded in the Gospels. Despite all of the other issues about the Gospels, we put those aside. We just say it's mentioned there that Jesus worshipped God. Many people trying to get together but all their efforts were in vain because of ignoring or turning away from this great foundation. We see many people coming to the way of truth, following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but later on,
they get off track. What is the reason behind that? Unity is a result. It's not a cover-up. We have to be united from inside. And Allah made this clear in the Quran when He said, وَأَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولَ Alhamdulillah. So uh, just wrapping up the verse number 30 in Surah Al-Baqarah that we learned from it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the heavens and the earth and He is our Lord and the Lord of the human beings and all that exists and that should bring the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in hearts. The angels are one of the creation of Allah and we heard about their characteristics and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam the first of the human beings and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the angels they said about what the human beings will do on the face of earth spreading corruption, shedding blood which of course something that is not permissible when it comes into the form of corruption on the face of earth, unjustified. And it shows the virtue of the angels and how they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how the human beings, they need to imitate them by obeying the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fulfilling His orders and believing in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that encompasses everything, not just the things that we know or make sense to us, but the things that is mentioned in the revelation of Allah, it's enough for the believers to submit themselves to it, whether they understand it, whether they do not comprehend it, it's enough for them because this is the words of the Most High, the Creator of the heavens and the earth. And inshallah ta'ala will continue with the set of verses that talks about the creation of Adam alayhi uh, salam. With some of the questions of uh, last week and some of the questions that we received in the email and the question of today briefly, inshallah ta'ala with the question of reciting Surah Al-Baqarah in the houses as a way of uh, uh, repelling uh, the devils from the homes. This is something that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the authentic hadith that the sorcerers, they cannot bear Surah Al-Baqarah. This is something that is over their capacity. So uh, it's uh, something to be recited and it, uh, as one of the authentic hadiths, it mentioned that for three days they won't enter the homes. So it's important that we uh, recite the Qur'an. The Qur'an itself, when we recite it in the language that it was revealed, is by itself a medicine, is a cure. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Physical cure and also cure to our hearts. So reciting Surah Al-Baqarah definitely from the beginning to the end is a way to uh, kick away those devils, those who would uh, uh, make the life of the believers misery. But the question was, is it permissible to use a cassette, for example, in the home instead of reciting it, if a person is not able to recite it? Definitely, the proper way is for the person to recite. And we need to, again, learn how to recite and take the time to learn. And, and this is the perfect way, and this is what the Hadith says, for us to recite it. If it's recited in the homes, then uh, the, the result as we heard. But definitely, uh, whether the uh, surah is recited or there's a tape that plays Surah Al-Baqarah, definitely it's better than nothing and it's good as the ulama they say, but it's not the same, of course. It's never be, and it would never be the same. But if a person is not able, then if a person would play uh, the, the, the surah, if it's correct to say play, but in the cassette, then as the ulama they say, this is not the same, but it's better than nothing, of course. And definitely listening to the Qur'an, it's such a beautiful thing. Uh, also, when it comes to how can we uh, overcome or defeat the whispers of shaitan. This question actually needs uh, a lecture after a lecture. The shaitan as it will come also in the uh, verses in Surah Al-Baqarah, the most fierce enemy against the human being, the oldest enemy to the human being, that he never tired, he never give up when it comes to uh, trying to make the human beings disbelievers to make them among the people of the hellfire. 
So the, the, the plots of the shaitan, we get to know that from the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, that the shaitan, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Qur'an, that he has a certain advantage over the human beings, that he sees us and we do not see him. If you don't see your enemy, you might not be able to know how to uh, act and how to counteract the ways of the shaitan. But it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we get to know that by the revelation from Allah. And that's why if people do not turn to the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu then they will be easy prey to the shaitan. Shaitan will deceive them. Why? Because they do not know the nature of the shaitan. They think it's their own selves. They are sometimes proud of even mentioning some of the whispers of shaitan, but they do not realize that these are whispers of the shaitan. So first we need to get to know that from the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, to know and never to forget that the shaitan is an enemy, that he is never tired, he never sleeps, he's constantly trying to cause harm to us in this life and in the hereafter, and that his plots are so weak if it's faced by those who are sincere servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there are many ways to cure ourselves from the plots of shaitan. First, to get to know the ways of shaitan. His goal is to make the person enter the hellfire forever. Even believers, yes, even believers. He does not give up. And the last moment of one's life, when a person dies on the state of Islam, this is the real victory. When a person saves himself from the whispers of shaitan. So as a result of, the sh- of that, the shaitan comes into steps, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, warning, the human beings from the steps of the shaitan, khutuwat is shaitan. He does not come all at once to you, want you to disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or commit major sins if you're away from major sins. He will come step after another to, uh, for you to be busy with something that is permissible too much and then making the heart away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing the dislikes and then the minor sins and then the major sins and then innovations in the religion and then associating partners with Allah and he would take the person from one level to the other. So knowing these levels is very important and to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why when we say, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم If we say that sincere dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the cursed shaitan this is something that the shaitan is not able to stand such a sincere dua if it comes from a sincere heart. And to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the shaitan has no power over those who are sincere slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why when we go through the verses of the Qur'an, you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the believers. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the plots of shaitan are weak. In the kaida shaitani kana da'ifa. But it's weak facing or versus the power of the believers when they're holding fast to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have a phone call. Uh, Sister Farha from uh, Saudi Arabia. Okay, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh. Uh, please let me know why did the angels say that man will uh, be corrupt on earth? Why men will, will do. Uh, why, why will man spread mischief in earth? They no. can have a pre knowledge of man? No. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Taib. So again, the question with the whispers of shaitan has so much details and we don't have enough time, but inshallah ta'ala, something that we need to ponder over and to get to seek the, the, the cure from the Qur'an and from the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, and one of which is to recite Surah Al-Baqarah, of course, to guard our salah, to guard the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to stay away from sins. Because when a person commits a sin, some people think that it's just a sin versus a good deed and the matter is over. No, when a person commits a sin, the shaitan becomes stronger and you become weaker. For So that the next battle... With the shaitan, you are weaker than before. That's why repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly makes the believers stronger. And again, the plots of shaitan are nothing but whispers. He does not physically force anyone to do anything. Adorning what is evil. So that's why we need to know what is right and what is wrong. Not based on what we think and what we see, but based on the pure revelation from Allah, the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. And every time a person falls into a mistake repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the goal of the shaitan is to make you give up on the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants you, once you commit a sin, he will come and tell you why you want to make salah. You're filth, you are a sinner, and so on. To defeat the shaitan is never to give up on repentance. As long as a person is alive, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so vast and we need to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Inshallah we'll touch on this subject more and more if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us life. There was another question in the email about a verse in Surah An-Nisa 
about uh, the children of Israel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that as a result of them transgressing and uh, the, the question was about a word وَبِصَدِّهِمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَثِيرًا and that they opposed the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot as a result of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made certain things not permissible for them verse number 160 in Surah An-Nisa if you want to refer to it inshallah ta'ala if Allah give us life we we'll refer to that later inshallah ta'ala but the question was what does it mean when they were opposing the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can that be taken as a lesson for us not to be uh, an obstacle to others from them not seeing the truth because of our affairs and our actions by committing sins and by causing harm to others and uh, stealing or, 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 del- or delusions and things of that nature would make people not see the true message of Islam and that means that we will be obstacles and we are uh, opposing the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can we learn such a benefit from the verse? The answer is yes. Although the verse means that they were killing the messengers of Allah, they were opposing the deen of Allah, they were belying the Prophet ﷺ, Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, telling the people of Quraysh to not believe in him, and they would deceive people, and this is all ways of obstructing the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also as the ulama, they say it should not be just limited to them, also for us, every single Muslim should learn from that, that we might hindrance, to people to see the truth by our actions and by our speech. And that's why we do not, our goal is not to please others, because we have to be careful also. It's not a matter of the da'wah is not the goal in itself. To call others to the deen of Islam is not the goal. The goal of, of life is to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether people accept the truth or not, this is not in our control. So our job is to be steadfast on the deen of Allah. To be steadfast on the deen of Allah and to be on the straight path whether people like that or not. But also when we are steadfast on the truth, we present the truth in the most perfect way. And we have the best example in the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, also when it comes to the question of correcting uh, or the correct way to complete the Qur'an. Completing the Qur'an, either reciting the Qur'an or memorizing the Qur'an. Uh, if it means uh, finishing the Qur'an in recitation, which is definitely a good deed. And the believers, when, we, uh, when a person recites the Qur'an, every letter a person recites it, he gets the reward of ten rewards, ten hasanat, ten good deeds. One good deed is better than this whole world and whatever it contains. So it's a great mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the person to be able to recite the book of Allah. So to start from the beginning and to end the Qur'an, it's definitely a good deed. And what's the proper way to complete the Qur'an? After we complete the Qur'an, what something special to be done at the end? Uh, for the answer of this question, we have to anything that we do in our life in matters of the religion, we have to refer back to the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet. ﷺ. So the question is: Is there anything in the Quran or in the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, or in the action of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, that they used to do something special after completing the Quran in recitation? The answer is. There is something, yes, and uh, as the ulama, they say, what is authentic is, for example, Anas, uh, radiallahu an, uh, he used to make dua after the finish of the recitation of the Qur'an. He would gather his family, his household, and he would make dua after finishing the recitation of the Qur'an. This is the only thing that is authentically proven from, uh, whether it's in the Qur'an or in the Sunnah or the sayings or the actions of the companions of the Prophet so that's why the at the end of any good deed, making dua is something that is good. But other than that, to give it any rituality to it, like the dua at the end of the salah, for example, or believing that this is a special dua at the end of the salah, or things of that nature, then there is no evidence for such a thing. So if a person makes dua after finishing the Qur'an, it's definitely a good thing. And Imam al rahimahullah, he mentioned that in his book of at tibyan and uh, other than that, again, it's something that we need an evidence from the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And of course, finishing the memorization of the Qur'an is such a blessing. And a person seeing himself that he finished the Qur'an, it's an honor. And that makes the person wants to even hold fast to the Qur'an. The Qur'an becomes an evidence either onto the side of the person or against him. That means we have to, not just to recite it, but to act according to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the question about why the angels, they said what we heard. And I think I mentioned that when we were explaining the verse. Why the angels, they said, 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you would make or create on the face of earth someone that would spread corruption and shed blood. Uh, as we heard before, that as if, as the ulama they say, as if the angels, they heard something, or they knew about the nature of the human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed them. That's why the context of the verses doesn't have to mention every single detail of what happened. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, informed the angels that he would create the human beings and create Adam alayhi salam. So just by that, they know the nature of the human beings in general, that this is how the affairs of the human beings will be. So as a result of that, they said what they said. This uh, part might not be mentioned in the verses, but this is something that can be within uh, the context understood as the ulama they say. Also, another explanation to it, that they got this by analogy, saying that the jinn before the human beings, they were present on the face of earth, and they were spreading corruption, and they were shedding blood. And that the human beings have the same nature in that sense with the jinn, that they have the ability to say yes or no, to be obedient or not. So as a result of that, they said what they said. So this is what the ulama, they said, based on what the angels, they said. And uh, again, uh, these types of uh, questions, or uh, it's very important that we ask uh, when it comes to matters of our religion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And it's important that we refer to the people of knowledge. And I would advise you also to, when it comes to questions in the religion, to uh, call into the program of Ask Huda. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us. And again, going to the, uh, the issues of what's happening uh, to the humanitarian uh, ship and what's happening in Gaza. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for uh, those who want to uh, help such a cause. And again, uh, after this program, there will be the iMagazine program. So please uh, tune to it. And we need to uh, take many lessons. Uh, and the lessons that we take from things around us, that we see with our own eyes, and we refer everything back to the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, we would see that this is not the first time, this is not going to be the last time, but it's very important and that's more important than anything else, that what are we doing as people that claims to be holding fast to the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, if we as individuals are not able to help in any mean or cause, we should have a mean of help and that is by making sure that we're not spreading corruption on the face of earth and making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the victory of our brothers and so on. But it's very important that we uh, stat become steadfast on the deen of Islam. Some people would say that there's no relationship between what I'm saying and what's happening on the ground. Yes, if a person has the means of help by any means of physical help that is permissible, definitely this is something that is very good. But when it comes to our personal uh, affairs, each believer, each Muslim on the face of earth, we should have a role in such a thing by being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by having the loyalty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to the believers, by turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with repentance, that a sin of a person can affect others and can affect communities, and for people to get to see their friends and the enemies, according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an, not according to our own benefits or uh, what uh, politics would demand on us, but according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept uh, our deeds and to make us steadfast and uh, to give victory to the believers. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Afala yatadabbaroon al-Qur'an ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كيف لا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا فلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا